Uh, hi guys, today we are joined by Mia, who will represent Croatia in the Eurovision Song Contest this year. How are you doing, Mia? I'm doing really well, thank you, and thank you for having me, and I'm very excited. Thank you for coming to us. It's a pleasure. Likewise. Uh, Mia, you're a renowned artist in Croatia, and, and you received several awards for your music. Could you tell us more about your musical background and also if music was a big influence in your upbringing? Oh, yeah, definitely. Music was a huge thing in my upbringing. I used to be obsessed with like songs, lyrics. I would listen to some of my favorite artists, even I mean, I'm not that old, but even on Walkmans and Discmans, I remember yeah. <laughs> just having my favorite CDs on and listening to them nonstop. And some of those were my first international influences were Celine Dion. It was um, American singer songwriter Jewel, who I still love so much. Then later on in high school, Taylor Swift, then Ed Sheeran appeared. Then it was like country, bluegrass artists and pop artists. And I, I'm just so stoked to be able to represent my country in an international competition. Uh, but for me, it all began quite late. I started playing guitar when I was 16. I never had a formal musical education. I just loved singing and I sang everywhere I could and played guitar as well. And then in 2014, I quite by accident got an invitation by a local band from my hometown in Croatia, Osijek, to go to a tour of the States and Canada, which sounds really fairy tale like and at the yeah. point <laughs> At the point, it definitely was like that. So from that moment on, I completely stopped believing in coincidences. And I just delved into this musical career, even though I was in college and my formal education was something else entirely. Mm -hmm. I was into foreign languages and I thought I would be just become a translator and live like that for the rest of my life. But then music appeared suddenly in my life and I got the uh, record deal after the tour. I put out a couple of albums and... Um, yeah, a lot of it has happened throughout the six years of my formal career. Mm -hmm. And now I finally applied to our national entry for Eurovision, which is called Dora in Croatia. Mm -hmm. And my song Guilty Pleasure won. So here I am now going to Eurovision and I can't be more excited and happy. So are we very, very uh, active career, although it's just been a few years. Yeah, it's, it's been a very active career. I just said to myself, and actually during that tour I mentioned, mm -hmm. I met my manager and a co-writer of a lot of my songs. And he just kind of recognized the spark in me that I wanted to pursue this so, so badly. And he said, let's go, you know, let's take over the world, whatever. <laughs> let's dream big and just do whatever we can to to do music for the rest of our lives. And I just said, well, okay, that's what I want to do as well. And we really worked real hard through the past couple of years and so much has happened. So many like beautiful concerts, tours, awards, albums. And I feel like now we are finally ready for the next big, big step in my career. And that is for me singing in English. And it always has been a huge aspiration. So my song, Guilty Pleasure, that I'm performing in Eurovision is actually my first kind of international single. So I'm very excited about mm. that. That's our we. Yeah, cool. Um, and we can see your ukulele in your background. And we know that you play multiple yeah. instruments. It's um, <laughs> do you have any other hidden talents? Uh, I have a lot of them. Uh, you can see the, the back door behind me. <laughs> There's a lot of instruments back there. Also a bit of mics, you know, the, the equipment. I like to record a lot of demos uh, here where I live. I like to do, do things kind of organically. I play guitar. I also play a traditional instrument called tambura. Tamburitsa. It's it's a Croatian traditional instrument. So I spend a lot of my musical years playing that in an orchestra. And also here behind me is, is a digital piano. So I like to use it as well when I compose songs. And all in all, I just think that music is 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 a dream profession. And I'm very grateful that I get to do this for for the living. Yeah, and when you have that many instruments, you have several opportunities to just do whatever kind of music you would want 
yeah it's it's way way easier also i i mean i don't i don't know a lot about production generally but i can like put a sample or a rhythm i want in a like basic program when i write songs and it really helps a lot because normally when i picture a song in my head i always get the impression okay i want it to go this or that way i want this genre maybe like want it to be more pop influenced or whatever country rock influence so it always helps when you have a little bit of basic knowledge so you can so you can like put it to to a document and then your producer can also see more precisely what exactly you want from the final track yeah absolutely and uh, now it's been almost three weeks since you won uh, the national selection in, in croatia and you won by a landslide um, what's the response been like both in Croatia, but also abroad? It's been so amazing. Like, I still can't believe it happened like that. I applied to Dora kind of last minute with the song Guilty Pleasure. I really believed in it and my whole team believed in it, but still it was never a song that was written for Eurovision. So I was always like, I mean, there's, there's no way I'm actually gonna go there in the end. But as it happened, it got really hectic and dynamic. And uh, since like those three weeks, I've just been giving interviews, planning out stuff, recording, just doing this, all the hard work that is necessary for us to be ready in May in Turin. But I'm not complaining. It's <laughs> what I think about, especially during the pandemic when there was a lot of like less activity for all of us musicians. Mm. I was just fantasizing about the time when we can finally go full tempo again. And I'm really happy that it's happening now. And I hope that we get to have an amazing Eurovision in May. And according to the songs I listened to, I think it's gonna be, wow, fantastic. I can't wait. Neither can we, for sure. <laughs> Um, and as you said, uh, your song was not uh, specifically written for uh, Eurovision. Uh, could you tell us more about the process of uh, creating your song and how it ended up in competing in Dora? Absolutely. Um, 2021 for me was like a huge New Year's decision. I'm finally going to start writing English songs. I've been wanting to do that for a long time, but I never had the opportunity. The time was never right. And then I just started writing and Guilty Pleasure was one of the songs that I liked the most and most of my friends and family who I played it to loved it the most and it's a kind of um, an intimate story about um, you know me uh, having dreamed about some guy for a couple of nights in a row and I started feeling guilty like you know I shouldn't be dreaming about that and normally the inspiration for the song is always this autobiographical moment where I just start thinking about something intensely and then I know it should probably end up in a song so guilty pleasure is kind of a this reflection on oh my god I shouldn't be doing this like I'm in a committed relationship is this wrong should I be feeling guilty so it's, it's kind of a, a partly an imaginary story but also based on a lot of my personal experience from the past, because I think at one point or another, we've all, we've all been in committed relationships where we might have felt like, you know, maybe this is, maybe I can commit to one person for a lifetime. Mm -hmm. Maybe there's more, you know, maybe there's this dream person coming along and I don't know when that's happening. Mm -hmm. So it got me just asking myself a lot of questions about relationships as such and us making a promise to one person that we're going to be devoted to them for the rest of our lives, which is a very severe and actually a very serious question when you think about mm -hmm. that. So the song was inspired by me questioning that, that concept mm -hmm. in general. And then um, my manager was actually the one who first thought of the song being a good candidate for Dora. And it just happened in November. And I think we were all like, well, yeah, you know, let's go for it. You never know. It's a perfect platform mm -hmm. for presenting English songs. Mm -hmm. And it kind of happened that we actually won the thing. Mm -hmm. And now Guilty Pleasure is listened to across Europe. And it's still so surreal to me. I'm so grateful for that. Can't imagine how that must be. Um, your performance in Dora, how do you feel that... Um, reflects the lyrics of the song. Yeah, I'm so glad that for the visual part of the song, 
we picked uh, one dancer. His name was Alex Olti, and he he came. He's actually from Romania. I didn't know him before the competition, so it was all about creating a chemistry between us and creating the storyline where he is kind of um, he's representing this fantasy that I'm having, this dream that I'm having. Mm. So throughout the song, he's appearing and disappearing around me, and in, in the, the the ending itself, where it's there's like this almost kiss. And then there's this like tension, but you never know whether it actually happens in the end or not. It's it should actually represent a reflection of this dream where I'm not sure if I should pursue this fantasy that I'm having or if I should maybe just stay, you know, in this real yeah. life. Mm -hmm. So I really liked the way Alex helped me uh, bring it to life. Yeah, and as you said, this sounds uh, really intimate. Um, and um, specifically for the Dora stage, but the Eurovision stage is uh, bigger. Um, how will you adapt to the bigger stage? We are currently deciding on the exact details, but we're definitely changing the performance. So that's the that's the final decision of my team. We're doing it like all from scratch. Of course, it's going to be the similar atmosphere, the similar interpretation of the storyline, but with just completely different staging, different colors. And um, I'm not going to like reveal a lot of it, but it's <laughs> going to be way, way different. And I think it's really exciting. I'm looking forward to to exploring yeah, cool. something new about the song. And um, recent years with COVID has brought this new thing to your vision, the live on tape recording. Have you done yours yet? Oh, you mean the backing vocals thing? No, the, the live on tape recording that you have to do, at least in Norway, we had to do it this year, where you record the winning performance in case of... Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. We, yeah, we're in the process of doing that. And I really hope it never comes to us actually using it. But yeah, <laughs> every, every delegation has to prepare one. And it's just like, I think we all have to come to terms with that. It's just the unusual year. And I mean... The fact that we even get to do Eurovision, I think we should all be grateful for it. And I for sure am. So whatever it, it takes, technical details, whatever is necessary, we'll absolutely do it. But of course, we hope we're all going to be able to come there and really yeah. feel the moment and be together. Yeah. We hope so too, definitely. Yeah. Um, and finally, this year, there will be pre-parties again. Uh, will yeah. you be attending any of them? I will actually be attending a couple of them because I just said to my team from the start, I, I want to go wherever we can, wherever there are dates available. I want to join because I really want to feel the atmosphere and I want to meet people one-on-one. -on -one. I think it's so important because, you know, like there's so many people who are crazy about Eurovision and who just genuinely love it. Yeah. We know, yeah. we feel it. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's amazing and us performers should all be so grateful for it, you know, because mm -hmm. people loving Eurovision are the ones creating the hype and enabling us to, for our songs to have that wider reach. Mm -hmm. So I am, I currently, I know I'm going to london and in madrid it's been officially confirmed but also i will give my best to go to amsterdam and tel aviv because mm. oh. I, I just i just want to live through this experience the most i can so i'll probably be seeing you if you're on one of on one of those parties as well but if not i'll see you in turin yeah yeah Definitely. <laughs> <laughs> we're planning on going to Amsterdam. If we if we are able to go, we will we'll try our best. So Okay, then then we'll probably see each other somewhere along the way. That would be so cool. Yeah, I hope so. Yeah. yeah. I hope so too. But you said that you're trying to make the most time to talk to your vision websites and, and to go to these pre parties, but are you planning any additional promotion for your song before Turin? Well, I'm currently uh, working on a music video. And that's like the most important thing that I should focus on right now. Because mm -hmm. since the since the final competition in Croatia, it's been so hectic that I honestly didn't get to plan it efficiently. And I'm hoping we're finishing it like in a week. 
And then after the premiere, there will be more opportunities for the promo, the PR stuff, and just me doing the best I can to spread the word about the song. Hmm. Yeah, um, and we were just wondering uh, about some of your Eurovision memories. So I was wondering if you could mention three Eurovision entries that have meant something to you. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Um, one of the most like amazing entries for me was As for Most of the People, Euphoria by Lorreen. Mm -hmm. it's, it's like so powerful and so immaculate. Then also I love, since I'm, I'm very much a country girl, I love uh, Netherlands entry, Calm After the Storm. Oh. Really it's such a classic. Yeah. And okay. also Alexander Ruback fairy tale. Wow, oh, really? <laughs> it's just such different, different songs, very special songs and very charismatic artists. Yeah. And uh, as to this year, have you heard any of the songs that you're competing with in the first semifinal? Yeah, absolutely. Whenever I whenever I listen through the songs that are going to be actually joining my song, I always feel this surreal moment like, okay, I'm listening to this these songs, but this has nothing to do with me, you know, like, I, can't, <laughs> I still can't imagine that it's like linked to my existence in any way. It's so amazing. I mean, I love Italy. Mm um i just love the song and the vibe and everything i love i mean ukraine is so cool also this year i love malta i i love Nor norway is a very funny song <laughs> i'm so glad you think so <laughs> yeah i just think that eurovision i mean it's it's always about also taking it lightly yeah and just having so much fun and enjoying the moment yeah. So also our, our Croatian neighbors, the Serbians, uh, they also picked out such an unusual song. <laughs> yeah, it's so amazing, and I can I can tell that the the public likes it, and I'm mm -hmm. very happy about it. So I think we're gonna have an amazing time there. Yeah, yeah. And as you said, Norway's entry, "Give That Wolf a Banana," is also in your semifinal, <laughs> um, and their guilty pleasure seems to be bananas. What is your guilty pleasure? Oh, my guilty pleasure. I mean, my guilty pleasure would always be a gin tonic or something. <laughs> is it pleasure or is it just pleasure? I don't know. <laughs> Good question. <laughs> I don't know. I, I think I have a lot of guilty pleasures. Maybe um, like re-watching Dawson's Creek over and over again. <laughs> I, I rewatched it this year again, and all of my friends were like, "How can you watch it again? When you, don't, when you already know what's happening in every episode." Yeah. And I'm just like, "It makes me happy. What can I do?" Yeah. So it's I think we should all have like guilty pleasures in our lives. Yeah. yeah. I think I can relate. I mean, I just uh, rewatched Gilmore Girls twice this year. So. Oh, I love Gilmore Girls. Yeah. <laughs> um, but um, the Norwegian fans, they're going to watch this. And uh, I just wondered if you could send them a greeting. You probably have many fans in Norway already. Oh, my God. Really? Yeah. That I mean, would be <laughs> um, Yeah. To all the Norway Eurovision fans, thank you guys so much for watching Eurovision and supporting Eurovision artists. It means so much to us, and I think we all can't wait for, to perform for you guys in May in Turin. And I think uh, actually um, our interview is coming to an end now. Um, so I just have to say thank you so much for uh, your time and coming to have a chat with, uh, with us. And we really enjoyed talking to you. Thank you. Um, and we want to wish you the best of luck in Turin. Thank you guys for having me and for inviting me. And yeah, wherever we get to meet, I hope we do meet. And yeah, have a nice day. Thanks, Thanks you too. Much.